Hi everyone, I hope all of you are having a wonderful time at home. And welcome back to EP Science Virtual Class. Once again, this is Jendrox Educator TV, your host for today. For this video, you are going to learn about the introduction of genetics and heredity unit. We might wonder why people are always interested in why a generation looks like the preceding generation and the next generation. A new baby may look like one of its parents, right? His eyes have the same color as his father. Or his nose may resemble his mother, right? Or even the color of our skin. So today we are going to find out what are those relevance no? in every living things that has a collection of physical characteristics of such traits from one parent to another. So it might resemble between one or two gametes. Okay, it could be animals or a plant variety. Alright? But we have to focus about the human traits and heredity unit. Since we talk about the words genetics, traits, and heredity, what are they? Alright guys, please take note of some important vocabularies regarding traits, heredity, and genetics. Alright? So, at first, what do you mean by traits? What is your trait? Where do you inherit the color of your skin? your eyes, the shape of your nose, and all other collection of your traits. Now, what do you mean by the word traits? Traits. Alright. A trait is a collection of physical characteristics which is being inherent from your parents, from our parents. Alright. What about heredity? What does that mean? Heredity is the passing down of traits from the parents to offspring. And what about genetics? What is that? Genetics, genetics is a study of heredity. So, those are the common relevance about the information or basic understanding with regards to genetics, heredity, and traits of a certain person. As we all know, this is one of the most significant value when it comes to the study of genetics because of this person which is Sir Gregor Mendel. Who was he? Gregor Mendel was the first scientist who studied the inheritance of characteristics in an organism. Gregor Mendel was known as the father of genetics. He used the garden peas as his experiment materials in the 19th century. He proposed that each parent donates a heredity factor now known as genes genes to the offspring he used in mathematics extensively as a mean of collecting and organizing his data all right heredity is controlled by genes what is genes genes are the units of inheritance that determine the characteristics of an individual. The traits are passed to the next generation through what? Fertilization. It is the union of egg cell and sperm cell that produce what we call zygote in order to be called fertilization or there is what we call the fertilized egg cell and sperm cell. Because of that, the traits are passed to the next generation through fertilization. That is why you might wonder what is your 
family traits. What is your family tree? From what generation are you now? Why do we call it fertilization? And how is it done? Fertilization is the process where the male gamete fuses with female gamete. Remember that? To form what? A zygote. Zygote. So what do you call of that process where the male gamete and female gamete fuses together? That is what we call fertilization. And what is it form? It forms zygote. And that zygote will be developed and it forms into fetus. Since we talk about the process of fertilization between the union of male gamete and female gamete, we also have an examination of chromosomes once an offspring will be developed. Our body is made up of millions of cells. Most cells contain complete set of genes. We have thousands of sets of genes. Genes act like a set of instructions that control and determine our characteristics such as our height, skin color, eye color, and your blood type. Take note guys that our genes are carried in thread-like structured what we call chromosomes in our cell nucleus. When a cell is not undergoing division, the chromosomes are not clearly to be seen, alright? So they are tangled like a mass of tiny threads, what we call chromatin. Chromatin, alright? So look at this picture so that you could identify and familiarize easily what does that mean during cell division process. Now, what happens during cell division? Chromatin becomes highly coiled and condensed. At that particular stage, it can be seen clearly with a microscope, so it cannot be seen with our naked eye. Once it can be seen on a microscope and it reads it clearly, that is what we call chromosomes. Okay? So, chromosomes seen in a cell during cell division. At that particular point, there is what we call life. Life of a certain organism, human or animal organism. Now, what are those number of chromosomes in a normal cell? There are constant number of chromosomes in one particular organism. It is an even number that is what we call diploid number or close parenthesis 2n. What are those organisms? So we are going to specify those. Human, cat, chicken, housefly, corn, potato. So these are involved with human, plant, and animal organisms or species. And what about the number of chromosomes? Okay, so let's talk about it one by one. Now, the species of human, there are 46 number of chromosomes. In cat, there are 38 chromosomes. In a chicken, there are 78 chromosomes. In housefly, there are 12 chromosomes. In a corn, there are 20 number of chromosomes. In potato, there are 48 chromosomes. Those are number of chromosomes in some organisms, which is written according to their field of study in genetics. What about the chromosomes that are similar in size and shape that can be paired? A pair of similar chromosomes is called 
homologous chromosomes. Homo means the same. Alright? So, try to look at the illustration between the chromosomes in a somatic or body cell in a human male and the chromosomes in a somatic body cell in a human female. We have 46 chromosomes in all our cells except the gametes. Alright? So, remember that there are 46 chromosomes. That is what we call a constant number of chromosomes in a human. We inherit 23 chromosomes from our mother and another 23 from our father. So, we have two sets of 23 plus 23, a total of 46 chromosomes. But if we do it by pair, 23 and 23 pairs, that is what we call homologous chromosomes. For example, a cat has a diploid number of 38. What do you think will be a homologous pair of a cat? So, how much is that number of chromosomes, the constant number? It was 38. This means that all cells in a cat except the gametes have 38 chromosomes. So therefore, there are 19 pairs of homologous chromosomes in a species of organisms, especially a cat. Alright? We will try to examine carefully the chromosomes of a human female, a human male, as shown above in that illustration. You will notice that there is a small difference in the last pair of chromosomes. There is a double X, capital X, pair of chromosomes. Both these pairs of chromosomes are known as sex chromosomes. Therefore, sex chromosomes is what we call compatibility in such particular traits and its own characteristics. Alright guys, what do you think, what are those important gametes that we have mentioned earlier and it is very useful during the process of fertilization? And who are those part in a particular gamete? So, we talk about sex gametes or male and female gametes, right? Gametes, in other words, that is what we call sex cells. That contains only half of the diploid number, which is called haploid number, okay? Half of it which represent as close parenthesis N. Why there is what we call a haploid number? It is because of the process during cell division due to meiosis. What is the role of meiosis process? A meiosis is a type of cell division to form gametes or it forms sex cells right when fertilization of course the female gamut and the male gamut fuse together to form a zygote that has a full diploid number of chromosomes that represents open and closed parenthesis 2n now let's have a look between male gamut and the female gamut so, this will be considered as parents. In that particular process, the undergoes fertilization due to mating or sex. So, that two gametes, alright? Male gamete has 46 chromosomes. That is diploid. Another 46 chromosomes for female gamete. What happens during the meiosis? That gametes will be divided. 
Now, what happens between the two gametes during meiosis process? Alright, that two gametes, there is what we call both has a haploid number. That 46 chromosomes from male gamete will become 23 chromosomes and that could be shared soon to the offspring. Alright? So in particular, the traits and characteristics. And what happened to the female gamete which has 46 chromosomes? Alright, again, it will become 23 chromosomes, the same haploid and that will be shared in one to its offspring so therefore during fertilization there is what we call a development of zygote so a fertilized egg and sperm which fuse together to form baby or offspring right now what do you think where is the 23 chromosomes from the female gamete and the other one 23 chromosomes from male gamete because they considered as haploid already all those 23 plus 23 chromosomes male and female will be joined together to form an offspring so once that offspring developed that baby got 46 chromosomes in total and that offspring or baby will be considered as diploid so where that baby got a diploid number which is 46 chromosomes because of the given 23 chromosomes from his father and from his mother another 23 chromosomes a total of 46 chromosomes all right so that's the way the entire structure how are we going to explain the number of chromosomes which is taken okay from male gamete and female gamete or from his or her parents because of the shared number of chromosomes in the end that baby inherent those traits and characteristics coming from where from whom okay from the shared number of chromosomes from his or her father or from his or her mother all right guys this is the end of our topic for today with regards to the introduction of genetics and heredity thank you so much for listening and watching this video and I hope you answer those quizzes and assignments at the Google Classroom in the APU website. Good luck! I hope you have a wonderful time learning at home. Stay home, stay safe, enjoy learning. See you all around.